I will. The month is June. June. Yeah. What's neat? Yeah. Come up here and sit. And then we're going to go eat dinner. Do you want to eat supper? Come here and sit. Come here. Sit. Sit. Good boy. Good boy. Okay, lay down. That's even better. Can you, you get him? Hold on, I'm wiping the shovel. Yeah, I got this. And the back light is not an issue. Okay. And I'm recording. With Caboose? Hi, I'm Kevin Rubel. And this is Diesel the Wonder Dog. And June's What's Neat starts now. The What's Neat Show is sponsored by Caboose, sharing our passion for trains since 1938. This is What's Neat for June 2019. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, and this month we've got a great show. First of all, Campbell Rice shares with us a beautiful HO scale layout built by Sam Sizdak. It's a beautiful layout with tons of craftsman structure buildings all over. What artistry Sam shares with us on What's Neat this month. Also, Rand Hood shares some new structures that he's building for his home layout that he's now starting progress and building on and planning. So look forward to the segment where Rand walks us through a lot of scratch build buildings that have a purpose already on this layout that he's building. We've got a beautiful HO and 3 modular layout that we videotaped at the Rocky Mountain Train Show out in Colorado. This is the New Mexico Narrow Gauge Modular Club. It's absolutely beautiful and we interviewed a couple of the members for that. We also interviewed some of the principals of the San Juan Model Company who have recently acquired about six different companies including Grantline and all they're doing is bringing the resources together to make this the best hobby in the world for all of us. It's a real treat. Drayton Black Grove shares with us some drone footage and modeling ideas from above this month. Pay attention to the height of the trees and imagine as you look at the Ohio scenery how this could be built into a really nice shelf layout. That's what I see when I see the drone footage and that's why we run it because it gives great ideas to folks out there. Now I'm standing on the Garden Railroad today because I've been getting a lot of work done it recently as the weather's been super nice out here and it's always such a challenge to model outside against mother nature and all the elements it's a lot of fun also be sure to check out caboose in lakewood colorado if you're on vacation in the denver area this summer they've got an absolutely beautiful store biggest train store that i have ever seen and when you're out there tell them that you've seen and heard about their store on what's neat and with that that's the lineup for june 2019 what's neat Hi, I'm Austin Allard, and for this segment of What's Neat, we're with Rand Hood. Although he hasn't built the layout yet, he's building buildings and models, and we're looking forward to seeing the future of his layout being built. Well, Austin, um, while the design plan was being worked out and we're finishing the space uh, downstairs, we've been actually constructing a lot of buildings and structures that we're going to need. And the one thing about doing mountain scenery is I don't need a lot of things, but there are a few key elements. and. Here's a couple of them here where this is a section house um, in Pine Cliff and there's the foreman's house. All these got destroyed by a, a wreck a while back, which is too bad. Um, just a little structure that Karen has on her desk that she keeps her monkey on there because she's all happy about that. And then, uh, yeah, this, this little uh, uh, speeder car shed and waiting area at Pine Cliff. Um, this is about five years too late in the era we're doing, but uh, with the Rock Island coming in, I'm gonna go ahead and allow this. And also these little elements of, you know, fuel. And then we were wondering at one time if there's actually restrooms there at Pine Cliff for the people. So we're building this abandoned uh, section, men and women's. Uh, nice little delicate structure, but it gives you something. This will be right up on the edge of the layout, so you can kind of view in there. Um, down closer to Denver, here's just a little structure warehouse element. Just totally kind of chipped paint and weathered out. Uh, just kind of had some fun with that and, and built a, a little dock for it. 
Um, this is actually just kind of a, a wing it, uh, but we wanted to put in a little industry and kind of show that. And then the main things that we're working on, here is the North Yard Tower uh, for the Rio Grande. And this is the, the structure base at this point that just all comes apart in sections so we can detail and do things. Uh, main structure, it'll have the micro mark uh, brick paper put on it. We have all the windows constructed. We figured out and, and rebuilt them all to be this masonry pane so they will match. Uh, so that's kind of a fun little project. And then nearing Pine Cliff, we have the big long bridge at that point. Karen and I went up and measured poured these abutments out of plaster, both ends, uh, the way that it sits, and then constructed the bridge on a 48 degree curve or radius um, so that when we lay it in on the plan, we, we refined that area right away so that it, this would work with the plan. And so the rushing water will be coming out through here and then we enter in, into the Pine Cliff area. Now on up the line, we've already begun working on the Moffat Tunnel. And this time we decided we wanted the full structure and it's gonna continue back into the mountain so we've allowed enough space. But this is just all kind of the component work at this point. And um, Monster Model Works uh, did this poured concrete and he actually, before he went out of business, ran this for me with eight inch plank widths for the board so they were correct. So we're putting a skin on this uh, to get that poured concrete look. And then inside, uh, we're just kind of setting stuff up. These are just things from the scrap box. You're not gonna really see it, but with lights on, it'll look like there's something there and things happening. So the main structure of the, of the portal, uh, back with vents, these, these are the, the big gates that close within the portal. And we are actually modeling where these go so you can see into the portal all the electric work uh, that they do, the little fence. These, I guess they're giant dampers. They close these to allow the airflow. So those will be part of that, both sides. And then we're modeling this a little longer, uh, but we're also adding some elements inside. So there'll be some glowing lights and things that happen within this model, as well as the sound. Uh, we have recordings of the uh, ventilation system working and that's part of the operation that you have to wait for that uh, the tunnel to clear. So this is things that we're working on now and there's there's a lot more things but um, at this point you know we're feeling pretty good about the progress and we're going to be breaking ground like momentarily. It's going to be great so thanks for checking in and it was good to see you. Great well we look forward to it. Thanks.
For this segment of What's Neat, I found Clark O'Byrne here with this beautiful narrow gauge layout. Now, Clark, this thing is gorgeous. You guys call this the New Mexico Monterey Railroad Club, uh -huh. and you guys have traveled all the way from there to be here in Denver at this gorgeous show. Yes. Tell me about this gorgeous layout. How old is it, and what are you guys doing here? The club started in 2004, and we have gone through three iterations of the layout. Modules get changed constantly, and in fact, we've got three brand new modules that are out for the first time at this show. Nice. So we get we try to get some change out of the modules and things like that. We have a lot of fun with it. That's awesome. Now, it looks like you built this at a really good height for viewing of past 40 inches, about four feet? About 42 inches, 44 inches, something like that. Okay, and it seems like the public's really receptive. This is the one layout that I see a crowd around all the time. Why is that? Most of the time when we talk to the people, they say we love the details, you know, and people go along and they'll look at all the details on each module. The two end modules are owned by the club okay. and they're built by all the club members. The rest of them are all individually owned. It's up to you what you want to put on your module. There's no design, there's no preconceived thing. Just make sure that it connects to your neighbor at each end. And we put a lot of details in, and that's what we enjoy doing. That sounds like fun. Now, you've got some great lighting on this layout, too. You've paid attention that lighting brings out the detail. Yes, sir, it does. And all of our lights have been converted over uh, to a 5,000K light, so it gives us a good daylight for the, for the actually, for the people to take the photos of the, of the layouts. They love to do that. It's absolutely beautiful. Would you say, Clark, that this is the best hobby in the world? I can't think of any that's any better. Of course it's the best. That's awesome. I love your layout. Thank you for sharing it with the viewers of What's Neat. Okay. And I'll that's this segment of What's Neat. And now I'm standing with Cheryl on this beautiful narrow gauge layout. And Cheryl, you've built this module Hermosa. And you also have a passion for trains. And it's I so do. wonderful that this hobby is so acceptable to men and women alike. We all enjoy the beautiful models and the art that this allows us to make. Cheryl, tell me about your passion and what you've built on this module. Well, two years ago, my, my friend Clark O'Burn, who you just interviewed. He's awesome. Yes, he is. Well, anyways, he asked me, well, what would you like? You want an, uh, a train or a train car, or do you want this bag, which was Hermosa Creek okay. uh, Bridge? And this is the bridge right now that the train is going over. And I said, I, I think I want the bridge. I want the bridge. Oh, I was um, hooked. And of course, I love that I, it's a hobby I can share with my husband now. Right. He's been doing trains for 20 plus years. And, and so it's something in our retirement that we can share. But yeah, that bridge and then all of a sudden, all of this um, happened from that. My, my husband, by the way, is the construction engineer. I don't do the... The, the screwing of the boxes and right. things like that. You've but got I such love a good building. eye for color, right? Um, you love well, to do the colors. I and... do. I love to paint. Uh -huh. um, in fact, some of the guys will get me to paint their figures um, because I love that little detail, <laughs> painting the figures and right. getting the faces and the colors right. So That's awesome. I love it. This is such a beautiful layout, and it's so wonderful that you get to share it with your partner, your kindred spirit in mm -hmm. life. Yes. How awesome is that? That it is, is just, awesome. It's got to be the best hobby in the world. It is the best hobby in the world. You're awesome, Cheryl. Thank you for taking the time and showing off your module with us. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm here with my friend, Sam Sizdek, and we're in his garage in this beautiful HO scale layout. Sam, glad you were able to join us today on What's Neat on the Road. Tell me a little bit about your empire here, and when did you get started? When did you build this, and how did you get into the hobby? Well, the hobby started basically just pretty much like everybody else. When you're a little kid, you get a train set, and I had yeah. a Mark set when I was little, but it don't know whatever happened to it. But after I got married, 
the wife knew I liked trains, so she went out and bought a little, just a little train set, and that was, that's been over 30 years ago. Wow. And yeah. uh, so it kind of came from there. It started out as a four by eight on, on top of a bed, the right. spare bedroom, and then it, it just kind of morphed into, into, this. into what we have today. But it's been, it's been a journey. It's been a lot of fun. It did, uh, takes a lot, uh, you know, you learn a lot. Sure. But yeah. something like you have to learn how to do electrical work and and carpentry and that sort of thing. So it's a lot of fun. So when did you build this this one here? When did the, when did you start on this? I started on this uh, going on uh, about 18 years ago. Okay. okay. I actually had a layout before, but we moved up here, and but uh, some of the structures were already built. So I, I brought some from the from Texas with me and, and, and just kind of went from there. Okay, cool. Well, let's let's take a minute and show everybody around and we'll just kind of look and, and let you explain different parts of your layout here. All right. Sam, tell me a little bit about your, your main boulevard here that you have and, and your traffic lights and, and the details you put into here. Well, a, a lot of the vehicles are, you know, just you can buy classic metal works and things like that, which, which are great because they're already painted and, and made to the period that you want to, to model, but the traffic signals are all scratch built from styrene. Uh, the posts that they're on are actually little uh, paintbrush handles from uh, these little How creative. 99 cent paintbrushes that you get, the little disposable brushes. So I started with those and then the rest of it is styrene that I uh, just, I cut the shapes and and the lenses and everything glued them together, painted them, and um, and hung them up there. It, so, it even looks like they're lit, actually. Yeah, they do. In some certain in certain lights, uh, you, like if you flash a camera or something, they actually look like they're uh, illuminated. And but they're they're really not. It's a it's a fluorescent type paint that I use. Remarkable. So. And uh, so. Let's just kind of walk down through and, and tell me about some of these now. Are these buildings scratch built or, or are they kits or, or what? Virtually everything here on the layout is, is a kit. Uh, didn't do a lot of scratch building. Uh, some of them are plastic kits. Some of them are laser cut wood. Some are hydrocal and, uh, and you probably recognize quite a few of them if you've been around the hobby any time. Uh, I started buying kits from uh, uh, a lot of them are downtown deco, and uh, some are bar mills and in Foss scale. But uh, it just depends on what caught my eye. It's amazing the detail you put into these, Sam. Uh, I, I, I'm just blown away how what attention to detail that you have on, well, on all these. The detail is what I really enjoy because it, it adds such a a dimension. If you see uh, just a, a building sitting there, it, there's no life to it. But when you start adding cars and people, and the, it makes it look like they're actually doing something versus just the building just sitting there empty. Absolutely amazing. And every little block seems to tell its own story. And speaking of telling stories, uh, what's the story behind this one? <laughs> Uh, that one I had to do a lot of convincing to get the wife to let me uh, buy that one. She wasn't too sure about it. It's a Foss scale building and it, it's a sort of a limited run type kit, but um, with mine, she said, well, with your personality, it probably fits you real well. So she let me get it and, and it's been a lot of fun. It's, it was a, one of the most difficult kits I put together, but it, it turned out nice. It looks very nice, very nice. Tell me about this section here. I see you've got your beautiful wooden bridge, and that is one of the first trestles I ever built. It's it's actually a plastic kit, and it's two kits put together. But I built this back in uh, I believe it was 1989, and it was part of the old layout. That, that was the only part that I brought up here from Texas, and I started here. It's here. So I'm in Sam's shop here and his work area, and this to me is 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 exciting is, is the layout personally because you really have a nice work area here and I've never seen uh, a hardly a work area that is so well organized I mean if, if, if you just look everything seems to have its place uh, against the walls and 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 is so organized and you know I, I can't imagine not being able to find anything you were looking for immediately <laughs> well I 
used to work, this was part of the original, the garage part, and I got tired of freezing in the winter and burning up in the summer. So I threw all this together with makeshift materials and it uh, we insulated it real well and it works real fine. I got heat in the summer, in the winter and, and air in the summer and uh, I've got good lighting and I can come out here and work and, and but I don't have a place to park the car, but uh, <laughs> that's kind of secondary right now. Sure. But, but it, it's, uh, I really needed this and I really- Very nice. Sam, tell me about this little kit here. Now this, this is one you scratch built? Yeah, it's a, it was a scratch built. I, I got the inspiration from a, a coffee table book and I just thought it just needed to be modeled. So I just kind of scratch built a little, little uh, roadhouse. Uh, a friend of mine who owns Blair Line came by one day and he saw it. He liked it. And so now he put it into a laser cut wood kit, which is the other one. And you can you could buy that from Blair Line or online or somewhere. It's called, he, he's, he named it Sam's Roadhouse, but uh, I didn't name the thing, but he, he named it Sam's Roadhouse. I was really tickled that he brought it out. It's, it's been a lot of, I've got a lot of compliments on it. Wow, that's that's a pretty amazing feat. Yeah. <laughs> very nice. It thank looks you. very, very good. Both of them do. Sam, I want to say thank you for, for allowing us to come look at it. Isn't this the greatest hobby in the world? It is. It's really, it's, it, it, you learn a lot and it, and it I, I got into it because when I, uh, I worked in a stressful job and uh, and when I could come home and get into this, it, it uh, it helps you calm down and, Absolutely. and make you forget about everything else and you start concentrating on this. So it really helps out. Is Well, we sure thank you for letting everybody see your uh, wonderful layout here and and uh, letting us to air it on what's neat on the road. Well, thank you. I'm glad you came by. Thanks, Sam. For this segment of What's Neat, I'm standing with John and Doug from San Juan Model Company, and I've got to tell you what, these guys have got a passion for trains, not so much for modeling, but you guys are actually creating a lot of different companies that you're adding to your portfolio of companies. It sounds to me like you're in it for real. Doug, tell us about all the companies you've got presently. So we started out with uh, Leadville Shops years ago, uh, me and my partner Bob Steers up in Billings, Montana, and we have since added on to American Limited Models. San Juan decals, San Juan model uh, car company. Then we picked up Grantline here later on this year, and we also picked up a company called Rail Graphics out of Chicago. So we've got Grantline, and we're all familiar with that because a lot of us scratch builders have been using that forever. I mean, Grantline came with all the Campbell kits, if I remember right, years ago. It was just something that we all needed to do. A lot of manufacturers used your windows and parts, but now are you expanding the line? Tell us about the excitement of what you're doing with these companies. Currently, what we're trying to do is just bring everything back into production that wasn't available for a lot of time. Because over the years, things went out of production, they stopped producing things. So we're trying to bring everything back into production, get it all back up, get an inventory going so we can improve customer service with people uh, and get the parts out there again. And then moving forward, we're, we're producing uh, through American Limited, we produce ready to run cars, and through San Juan Model Company, we're going to be producing ready to run narrow gauge cars also. Austin running a camera, bought one of your American Limited cars in pink this week and he's yep. really proud of it. They also make great diaphragms for passenger cars, don't they? Correct, yeah, that's a line that I really didn't know that much about it when we first started. Uh, when we bought San Juan, American Limited was kind of like a add-on company that we really didn't know much about. So when we took them over and started understanding all the stuff they did, it was amazing the demand for that product out there. And then for other things that haven't been produced from American Limited for a while, uh, they did a thing called the N-Scale Core Kits for guys that did the sides for the cars that we'll be bringing back right, out also. Right, that right. a lot of people are demanding getting those back out there really quickly. Another nice thing is you're 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 in between all the scales. I see ON3 scale, ON30, and you've also got the Grant line, the narrow gauge cars, and HO scale. Correct, yeah, we, we have everything, basically we have everything from Z scale all the way up to large scale with Grant line, and then the, and also with the decal line on stuff. And then with the ready to run stuff and the other narrow gauge cars, we do a lot of different scales on that That's side. awesome, Doug. Now I've been talking to John yesterday and today and I love his enthusiasm. He is one of the best guys you've got to work with as a partner in this operation. Yeah. You guys are all working under the same roof all day long. Tell me how great it is when you're working in an industry that you love with people like John who's so good. 
It's, it's been an interesting change. I did IT my whole life. That was my background, so, and then this is a total switch on it, and uh, me and John have been friends forever, and it really is just a natural fit for us to work together on stuff, and, you know, the synergy that we have and the working together has right. really been really nice. John, is this the best hobby in the world or what? <laughs> been doing it for 50-something years. You're awesome. <laughs> You're perfect. Yeah. I was making Grand Line, using Grand Line parts when I was like 15 years old. Sure. And now I'm making them. It's great. Never thought that would happen. This is awesome. Yeah. We look forward to see what you're going to do with these companies that you've got in your portfolio. They're all important to us modelers, especially us narrow gauges. We really need what you do. The decals, the cars, the parts, so many diversified items. What website can we go to to find out all the stuff you've got? If you go to SanJuanModelCO.com, <clears throat> excuse me, you can go there and there's links to all the different sites from that from that main site there. Uh, Grantline's website is still up and running. Uh, a lot of people think Grantline is out of business. They are not. Uh, we are producing the parts, we are shipping parts, so everything is ready, ready to go. That's awesome, guys. Grantline is not out of business. Yes. This is the best hobby in the world, Doug and John, guys. Thank, thank you, you so much, much for sharing all of this with the viewers on What's Neat. Thank you. Thank you. All of the model railroad products seen in this episode of What's Neat are available through Caboose in Lakewood, Colorado, or order online at mycaboose.com.